James DeMille was a Canadian novelist and professor of history and rhetoric, noted for his wit and humour. Born in 1833 in St. John, New Brunswick, the son of merchant Nathan DeMille and Elizabeth Budd, educated at Acadia College and Brown University, in 1856 he started a bookseller business but failed and wound up in debt. In 1859 he married Elizabeth Ann Pryor. In 1860 he became professor of classics at Acadia College. In 1865 he moved to Halifax to become professor of history and rhetoric at Dalhousie College. He wrote about 30 books and died in 1880 at Halifax. DeMille wrote comedic and historic fiction, but his one fantastic title, a strange manuscript found in a copper cylinder, which we shall be reviewing today, was not published during his lifetime. Serialized after his death, it was published in book form in 1888. The novel begins with the act Falcon discovering a copper can floating about the ocean between the Canaries and Madeira Islands. The papyrus they find within tells of how Adam Moore, mate on the ship Trevelyan, shipping convicts to Van Diemen's Land, ended up stranded on the South Pole in 1843, despite his best efforts to make his superiors recognize that fact. A group of locals try to convince the crew to come along with them, and Agnew, Adam's superior, again refuses Adam's warning until it is revealed that these are cannibals, and Agnew gives his life to allow his companions to escape, more fighting off a horde of cannibals as he makes for the boat. On his way, he falls for a cataract and ends up in a tropical land, hemmed in all sides by mountains. The local people are very curious, loving to live in darkness, adoring death, and taking any excuse to slay even slightly wounded comrades. The country is one where the poorest people are held in the highest esteem, chief among them the chief hag and chief pauper, with the rulers, headed by the Kohen Gadol, being the most despised and lowliest. However, it is not merely satirical, as allusions to Buddhism and ascetism aid to make it seem more realistic. As Adam makes his way through the country, he discovers Alma, a woman who, like him, fears death, and of course, both become lovers. But soon, there are bigger worries, as Moore discovers that the people of this country are cannibals as well, intending to honor Alma and Moore by giving them the blessing of death on the day of the coming of the light season, and they all crawl into their dark holes to avoid it. The daughter of the Kohen Gadol, Laela, falls for more and tries to escape with him on the back of a giant pterodactyl. After his and Alma's capture, they are to be given the greatest honour by being forced into rags, confinement, and permanent separation, as these people adore nothing more than suffering unrequited love, a fate which they can escape only by means of a very bloody conflict before the ceremony of separation is complete. It is a very imaginative novel, the inverted morals and customs being portrayed realistically, with a lot of grim scenes that make this more than simple satire, the weird atmosphere presented quite skillfully. 